and welcome to the new series of Tim's Wild Kitchen. In this series, we'll be attempting to flight pink footed geese, or is that a pink foot goose? Whatever it is, we're gonna try. We're walking up cock pheasants and hen pheasants and doing our best back in the kitchen to turn them into a wild feast with a few tasty tipples to boot. Cheers. again it's very exciting it's too early in the morning for me to be this excited but um, I'm going out we're going out we're gonna try and shoot a pink footed goose um, and I've got Ben on the back gun so you know we're pretty much in the money if the geese are where we think they're gonna be because of the difficulties of decoying uh, <clears throat> this time of year it's normally much colder but it's not that cold so they're not really coming in predictably so we found a roost we're gonna go and knock them off the night roost and, uh, and try and intercept them between uh, between the night roost and, and before they get up in the air too high. Um, luckily, as I say, crack shot Ben's here. If it was up to me, we'd probably be looking at a vegetarian diet this evening, but we'll see how we go. Is, is, that, is that more or less the plan, Ben? Have I got it right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, boss. I think the words right in my mind. Oh, excellent. Yep. Okay, good. So it's that simple, really. And the nice thing is it's, um, it's quite civilized up here in Scotland because it gets light quite late in the day at this time of year. We haven't had to get up at the crack of dawn. It's, um, it's quarter past seven. I mean, that's pretty civilized, isn't it, for early morning goose shooting? Hopefully it'll go well. tell that wasn't exactly the plan um, quite a lot of geese we were, I think we were sort of 10 seconds from success there nearly the plan yeah noisy tractor um, we're gonna go somewhere else we're gonna try again uh, we've just about got enough darkness still that it's half a chance of getting one so we'll crack on if they turned three seconds later I, I would have had a go oh, yeah. but they were just that 20 yards further out was like, they look yeah. well out of range to me Firing yeah, well, it's even, the old thing. Even I was like, yeah, yeah they're just, no, just too far from me. I'm gonna make it die. Ready? Pink footed goose, take two. Take two wasn't any more successful than take one. <laughs> oh, oh well, they're not pheasants are they, you know? <laughs> so the curse of the pink-footed geese continues. Um, they've just done exactly the same thing. They didn't see us or anything like that, but they've lifted up off the field. The wind's in the perfect position. It looks like they're gonna come and they've just turned and cleared off out the side. And if you had sort of 10 guns around the end of the field, we'd probably have got one, but just me on my own and Ben for backup, they're just getting out and going and we're not getting a chance at them. So, so far, no geese. Well, the geese did not play ball this morning. I mean, 
they're pretty wily. I was hoping to do was get away with not having to sit in a hide, getting cold, waiting for evening flight. So we tried knock a few geese off this morning, and of course they all went the wrong way. It didn't come over me or Ben. So so far no goose, and that means we're going to have to resort to Plan A or Plan B, which is yeah well, it would normally be Plan A, but we made it Plan B, to go and sit in the hide in the middle of the field and wait for the geese to come in. Now that will be great, but we'll be cold. Whether we're successful or whether we fail, we're gonna need a little bit of Clan Fraser magic to warm us up at the end. So I'm just gonna knock up a quick hot toddy and pop it in a warm flask so we've got a restorative in case we're dying of frozenness by the time we get back. Um, I wouldn't use a single malt necessarily for something like this. Something like Clan Fraser Reserve Blend like this is absolutely perfect. It's got the sweetness and the richness and the oakiness and it's all there. It's really strong enough and punchy enough to stand up to this but it's not got those sort of delicate aftertones that you'd be losing if you used a good single malt for it. And the other thing is, it just feels nice, it feels warming. Right, so I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of that in the jug, because it will be cold. And then I'm gonna add some, you know, some sort of nice things. So we're gonna put some honey in rather than sugar. I know people, quite a lot of people like to use sugar, but I think sweeten it with a bit of honey. Um, <clears throat> some cloves. Nice cloves in there. A little bit of cassia bark or cinnamon if you've got it. Don't put powdered spices in a hot toddy. Just don't do it. It goes all gritty and it's not nice. Um, so I pop those in there and then I'm gonna put a little slice and a little squeeze of lemon. A little squeeze. And then the same with the orange, just a little chunk. Get the aroma out of the skin and a little bit of acidity from the juice. And then my secret ingredient. If you've ever had uh, a whiskey mac, which is um, ginger wine, <clears throat> and whiskey together. You know that ginger and whiskey work together beautifully well. A little bit of fresh ginger root, just chopped and dropped in your hot toddy mix is a no-brainer. So I pop those in there, and I need my, my stirry stick. Where is it? Just start dissolving that honey. And then we've got to put enough boiled or nearly boiling water in here to make this hot. And I always think you want sort of two to three times as much hot water to whiskey because although you don't want to water it down so much, you don't get that nice alcohol hit from it once you've put your gun away and got back from wherever it is you were. You want it to be ready, and you also want to be able to have a big slug of it to warm you up. So too much whiskey and you sort of have a big slug of it and go, oh my God. Um, so don't make it too strong. So two to three times as much water as you've got whiskey. It'll be nice and hot. So we're just banking a bit of restorative goodness. Oh, I better cut them otherwise I'll come and take them out of the flask. They'll be stuck in there. Move <clears throat> that last bit of ginger. Oh, it smells like Smells like a mixture between Christmas and cough mixture. Perfect. It's a sec. Load up the void. That's one of the pictures. There we go. Now we're going to take a bit of the Pink footed goose. Take three. Um, this is the same field that we knocked a few off this morning, but we didn't have a shot at them because they went the wrong way. So we're hoping that what will happen is they'll come back into this splash here. With the way the wind is, they're going to go round and come back. Actually, that's a skiing piece up there now. Um, hopefully, they'll come round us and come down sort of low enough to have a good shot at before they drop in over there. So all that remains is for me not to get it wrong and the geese to play ball. Fingers firmly crossed. Like shooting for geese or even, even ducks, you know, as the darkness is coming in, 
it's one of those things that it's very special wherever you do it but up here in Scotland it's got an extra edge to it and the feeling of stuff coming in in the semi-darkness and you you know it really is man versus beast or shooter versus beast it's, it's, it's much more on that hunting than shooting kind of spectrum I really really enjoy it it's very exhilarating it's a great way to spend the evening even if nothing comes into flight it'd be amazing to watch the other birds come past and all that sort of thing but if you do have a good flight you're going to bear in your mind we're talking about wild stuff here we're going to be sipping not gulping we're going to be taking just what we need and then we'll pack up and watch the rest of the birds come in geese go over but been a long way up a couple of the smaller groups have sort of come a lot closer but nothing's really committed to the splash yet I think maybe just a bit too a bit too light still any minute now though hopefully something will come within range and give us a decent chance Goose down. Oh, thank, thank God for that. I thought it was never going to happen. Got a goose, Ben. Well done, sir. Thanks very much. It was dark. It was hard work. But we got the Clan Fraser hot toddy to perk us up at the end and a safe drive across the fields to get home. Cheers, Cheers well Ben. Well done. Cheers, Cheers. Guys. Job done. Next time I suggest something like goose, can you just say, no Tim. <laughs> Let's go for something easier. I'm just remembering the most awesome and incredible hunting experience i think if not that i've ever had then certainly in the top four listening to these pink foot goose just pouring over the splash hiding in a tiny tiny little hide like this with you and her pretending that none of us were there in the hopes that these geese would come and just eventually pretty much giving up on the idea that we were ever going to get a goose to come in shot the whole day it felt was cursed. And then right at the last minute, victory was snatched from the jaws of defeat by what I have to admit, you know, was uh, a, a great shot in the dark. I couldn't see the geese, I could hear them, I couldn't see them. And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking, I'm never gonna be able to see these, they must be right over me. And then all of a sudden they were there and they just pulled through on one, pulled the trigger and that joyous sound of pellets striking <laughs> and down it came nearly decapitated poor old Dan the cameraman but uh, we got this goose and oh just what an incredible payoff there's so much adrenaline in my system from listening to these geese come over it was just incredible there's moments like that that just you know they, they enrich life um, I will remember that until my dying day and so partly because of the amazing experience I've decided to honour the goose in the finest way possible by plucking the breast meat and, and then taking it off. I then weighed the breasts, okay, and I made some dry cure mix. And the dry cure mix is 50% sugar, 50% salt, a few spices, in this case some fennel seeds, some green peppercorns, okay. Weighing the breasts is important. We weighed them and then I calculated the weight of them times 2% and then I added 4% of this, because you want 2% salt. So 4% of dry cure gives you 2% salt. So I weighed out 4% of that, rubbed it all over them, put it in a vacuum packed bag, vacuum packed it, left it in the fridge uh, for 48 hours until it was fully cured all the way through. Then we took the vacuum packing off, brushed off the liquid, you know, wiped off the liquid and left them to air dry in a fridge with a fan running for a week. They then had about 
four hours in the cold smoker in the Bradley over whiskey barrel oak. These are going to be pretty special. So these cold smoke goose breasts that have been air drying for a, a week before they went in the cold smoker have just had four hours over oak smoke. So they've been cured, then air dried, then cold smoked, and now they're going to go into a really nice salad. Whenever you've got an ingredient as special as that, you know, I put a lot of work in there already, we want to kind of keep the cookery process quite simple. So we're just going to build a, a simple salad. Some walnuts, some pear, the smoked goose breast, a little sherry vinegar or aged sherry vinegar dressing, a few thyme leaves, some nice Hebridean blue cheese. It smells incredible. It's got a bit of something going. Um, and the walnuts, I'm just going to toast quickly in the oven. So I'm going to get a few nice walnuts there. These have just been carefully de-shelled. Um, by our fantastic food stylist assistant, Emily. Um, uh, she does all sorts of other things as well. And we'll put a little tiny bit of that on there, a bit of olive oil, light olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and I'm just gonna pop them in the oven. Now, I very seldom time things particularly, but if you don't put a timer on when you put nuts in the oven or croutons in the oven, what will happen is that you'll burn at least two lots of them before you remember. So I'll just fetch my trusty iPhone. Other types of um, smartphone are available and I'll set myself a timer for three minutes just to get those toasted up nicely. So the dressing for this salad is mega easy. I've got some aged sherry vinegar here. It's actually a Pedro Jimenez sherry vinegar, which is just a fancy sherry. I've got a bit of soft honey as well. So I'm going to Add a little bit of honey to my vinegar to give us a sort of sweetness to the sour. Always very important that we balance one with the other. Don't want too much acidity taking over. And then I'm going to very finely chop a little bit of garlic uh, to go in there. Probably not a whole clove. We don't want to blow our heads off with raw garlic. Just a little bit. Could use a smaller knife. A little bit of raw garlic just to give it a bit of punch. Go with half of that, I think. Just start mixing that honey into that vinegar. Now you could add a little bit of mustard. Lots of people would, myself included, and in the past I've done that, but I'm actually gonna just use a little bit of black pepper, a few thyme leaves, and then whilst I am going to crumble some blue cheese into the salad itself, I'm also going to put a little bit in the dressing. And that's going to sort of do the, the job of the mustard in terms of adding a little bit of emulsification, you know, a bit of thickness, as well as lots of salty, punchy flavour. It's a really nice blue cheese, this. But if you can't get this, then obviously a good Stilton would be fine. Or even, you know, a Dorset Blue Vinny or something like that. Oh, I've got a bit of time stuck in there. And I just whisk that again. Blue cheese starts to dissolve into the vinegar. With a little honey, black pepper. And then I'm just going to add some really, really good. This is my favorite. Um, olive oil, this is from my friend John's place down in Umbria. Uh, but any really good, oh! That's how easy it is to burn your nuts. Um, <coughs> start talking about your dressing and before you know it, there we go, just three minutes on the bottom of the agar. They're nicely toasted now, that'll give them much more, um, much more of a high profile in the salad, okay? Just wake them up like that, really nice pop them there to cool down. Um, so any good, you know, single estate extra virgin olive oil will be fine. Remember, it's quite peppery, quite punchy. So are the other ingredients in this dressing, so we don't want to completely overdo it. But we do want something to offset that richness of that goose breast. It's going to be really intense, you know, air dried, cured, and then smoked as well. So.
The last job of prep really before we slice up the goose is to get a bit of pear ready. And I, you know, I do like a nice pear. This is, this is a ripe uh, conference pear, but it's not so ripe that it's too soft and sweet. I mean, they're really nice like that with a cheese board or something. But for a salad, we want sweet ripe fruit, but we don't want it to be too soft. Okay, it wants a bit of crunch to it. Mm. Delicious. All right. Pear and walnut, very, very classical combination. I'm just gonna chunk up a few bits of that. So I've got my dressing ready, got a bit of blue cheese there, we'll add a bit of that. I've got my pear cut, and I've got my walnuts toasted. All that's really left to do, um, I've got my watercress, that's already here, pre-prepared. All we really need to do now is slice a little bit of this goose breast. Incredibly succulent and rich, this goose meat from the wild pink feet geese that we get up here. All we've got to do now is pretty much throw the salad together. So some nice washed and well-drained. I'm going to use watercress. You could use rocket or even, you know, some peppery um, kale or lettuce even if that's what you wanted. And then I'm going to start with very lightly dressing uh, that because I want to give it a bit of shine and make sure everything's dressed, but I want to drizzle a bit of dressing over the salad once it's plated. Um, in with that, I'm going to crumble a little bit of this lovely blue cheese so we get both the joy of the cheese in there in pieces and also the cheese coming through in the dressing. Give that a quick toss. Pop the pear in as well. Nice colour. Well, that would be a nice salad on its own. But when we add a few bits of toasted walnut, it's just really going up another level. Then I'm going to take some of this nicely dressed. I'm going to put a decent portion of that on this plate here. Try not to mess about with it too much. You know, the temptation when you're a chef is to try and arrange things beautifully all the time. It's not really always necessary. And then the goose just nestling in there, not with too much, you know, not tossing it around in the salad so that it, you know, keeps its own character a little bit. Uh, a few more walnuts over the top, lightly crushed. And then a little, little drizzle more of that lovely sherry vinegar and blue cheese dressing. You know, if that isn't paying homage to the incredible wild creature that is the pink goose, I don't know what is.